Hi, uh, good morning, SRE Count. Uh, we are <laughs> very happy to be here with all of you today. And, well, uh, before we start, let's get a hand of show. Well, uh, is anyone joining SRE Con for the first time? Oh, good. Thanks. Uh, don't worry. Uh, it's also first time for me to present at the conference, so you are not alone. Okay. So let's start presentations. Uh, I'm Yusei Fuji from Sony Interactive Entertainment PlayStation. Uh, I'm director of SRE and platform engineer. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Yuya Miyahara, and the director of SRE and, and PlayStation. So this is our first time to present uh, how we PlayStation does SRE. Uh, so I'm happy to be here. Okay, so this slide gives you a quick history refresher of our PlayStation product timeline. Well, uh, our first original PlayStation was released on 1994, and PlayStation 2 was released on 2000, PlayStation 3 released on 2006, and PlayStation 4 released on the 2013, and on 2020, uh, we released PlayStation 5. Well, uh, 2020 was a challenge, very challenging year. So we recall uh, what has happened. Yes, uh, COVID-19. Uh, uh, we were all in under the dark with unknown virus. Uh, at that moment, uh, we were afraid of becoming infected, and the information of the symptoms, the prevention and treatments are very limited. And in addition, uh, several governments uh, encourage publics to stay at home. Well, uh, most of us understood it was necessary for us to save our lives, but it brought us additional mental pressure. Uh, such situation gave a rise to so-called home nested activities. Uh, many of us uh, replaced our furniture and made cookies with children uh, instead of the traveling or going to the restaurant. And well, uh, game is one of such so-called homeless activities. So we can play video game from at home and can connect with friends through the online game services uh, such as the PlayStation Network. So the video game is one format of the entertainment that keep attractivity uh, under the COVID-19 situations. So let's take a, take a look at the user trend before and during the COVID-19. Yep, uh, this is our internal operation reports. Well, typically uh, our annual peak is on Christmas. So in 2019, uh, the date seemed typical uh, with us peak on the Christmas and stable transition until February 2020. But uh, on March, uh, the traffic drastically spiked uh, when the lockdown began in US. So at first, uh, on March 13th, uh, the concurrent connections recorded almost same as the Christmas traffic. Then the traffic still growing, and on March 28th, uh, the current concurrent, and we recorded about 1.5 times uh, concurrent connections 
uh, of the 2019 Christmas. So I wish uh, I could the exact number of the concurrency connect, but uh, I suppose you can imagine what the big traffic we dealt with at that moment. And at the same time, we started unintended the work from home at that moment, so it was very tough to handle these tasks, but we succeeded in scaling our system. So the reasons are the one, uh, we had been improving our system, uh, many events, for example, the new feature release or triple A game title events trained us and our system. The second reason is uh, many of us understand the PlayStation Network is one of our hope uh, for the people under the COVID-19. So we could engage to overcome such traffic growth. And then uh, November 2020, uh, we launched a PlayStation 5. Uh, these photos are PlayStation 5 launch events. I picked up near the APAC, for example, the Singapore, Japan, and so on. And well, a new console launch itself is very big milestone for PlayStation. And in addition, uh, we were faced on the unintended the remote work session and urgent tasks related with the COVID-19 lockdown driven traffic. So the preparation was very hard. Well, uh, for the preparation tasks, uh, we did various tasks, not only the strict QA or release management, uh, but also the game day or raw test in the production. Game day is a practice uh, that we simulate the failure and outage. <laughs> And we did it not only for validating our system behavior under the failure, but also <clears throat> made engineer confident with the handling the incidents. So we walked through the people tools process to any incidents that may come up with the new console launch. And well, we predict uh, request per second for PlayStation 5 uh, by based on the PlayStation 5 sales plan and the logistics because the access for PlayStation network is tied with the hardware delivery. And we operate a PlayStation 5 prototype machine according to the critical scenario, for example, the sign and the purchase and we generate a logs and we create a raw test scripts by the logs. And we executed a raw test in the production to get the confidence, not only our code, but also the some cloud, public cloud limitation, for example, the API call limit or the manage the database capacity and so on. So we did raw test in production for PlayStation 5 launch. As a result, uh, we can release PlayStation 5 with zero red critical incident during the November 12 to 22. Uh, this period was our hypercare period for the PlayStation 5 launch. And today we are still continuously fighting with the high traffic. Uh, well, uh, PS4 generation API and PS4 and PS5 compatibility API received massive traffic during the COVID-19 lockdown, but the PS5 generation API have no such experience. So, and PS5 sales growing day by day and the consumer traffic becomes increasing. Uh, for example, uh, one single play game title that heavily used our API becomes a big hit. 
just after the game launched, some of our services received uh, 30 or 50 or even 100 times traffic. So we had to scaling out our services to keep our availability. So, <clears throat> and our, we are still continuously developing new feature and functions and the PlayStation sales is still, five sales is still growing. So we are continu continuously fighting against uh, such huge traffic. Okay, so, okay, so I hand over to Yuya. Uh, he will explain about the uh, SRE story in Tokyo. Thank you, Seth. Uh, good morning, everyone. So uh, I'm Yuya Miyahara from the Tokyo uh, Japan office. So let's start uh, with a little history of our Tokyo SRE team first. Today, uh, our SRE team uh, are dispersed globally, and uh, Tokyo is one of the main locations. So uh, we uh, primarily support gaming functions and platform-based functions. And to support these functions, uh, we utilize a few different operational models. So we will present uh, each of these models by location uh, in the following slides. Since conception, uh, our SRE organization has undergone three significant evolutions. The first one uh, was when we launched PS3 in 2006. And before PS3, uh, we had limited network functions for PlayStation 2. Uh, it's possible to play online games on PlayStation 2, but we did not uh, have PlayStation Network yet. From PS3, uh, we have launched PlayStation Network and started Ops Team. The second one uh, is around uh, 2013. And when we launched PS4, we had three Ops Team internally uh, and started using Cloud to handle massive traffic from PS4. Uh, and the last one is around 2020, when we launched PS5. So next, uh, I will step through uh, each structures uh, and reason uh, behind the change. Uh, when we first launched PlayStation Network, so we were a very small team. Uh, when, I uh, when I joined in 2007, there were only four people. So we, we had an expert for each area, network, OS, application, and incident management. So uh, everything went well, uh, but uh, no one could support each other. Uh, and I also did application deployment and operations for all services. Oh, unbelievable. But uh, we could, so because the platform was small. Uh, and there were no uh, difficulties in communication between uh, dev and ops. So uh, I could just look over my shoulder and ask, the, hey, so what does the settings mean uh, to dev team? Uh, and external uh, contractors monitored uh, our system 24 by 7. So uh, we rarely performed recovery operations in midnight. Um, but uh, PSN users uh, increased. So a lot of things changed. A few years uh, after the PS3 launch, uh, in preparation for PS4, uh, so we divided up section to three small teams for each function. Uh, communication and community and backend. Uh, the, during the PS3 era, uh, a significant part of our PlayStation base, uh, a player base still, uh, enjoyed playing games without network functions. Uh, but the plan for PS4 was for games to be much more tightly combined uh, with network services in order to enhance and enrich user experience. So this uh, required an increase in server resources to handle the projected exponential increase in traffic from the console. So uh, we discussed, so uh, what infrastructure we should choose, on-premise or cloud. Uh, since we use, used on-premise for PS3, so uh, we were taking, up care, taking care of hardware procurement, the state, uh, a spec of network switch, and the uh, power supply, and the space of the data center itself. Um, but 
what、uh, we should focus on、uh, is not、uh, getting the knowledge、uh, on physical way, but、uh, providing value to customer. And、uh, AWS has an advantage from a cost perspective, so、uh, we decided、uh, using AWS. In addition,、uh, our system infrastructure also changed. Each PS3 network function、uh, was independent, meaning most traffic、uh, went through the console, but PS4,、uh, PS4 launch brought、uh, network interconnectivity between Tokyo, San Francisco, and San Diego. So our system、uh, continued to be monitored、uh, by external vendors.、Uh, But, uh, 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 but since interconnectivity、uh, increased, we needed one team to monitor our whole PSN and to keep the system stable.、Uh, so we migrated our 24 7 monitoring to the internal team in San Diego.、Uh, after PS4 launch, so、uh, application、uh, development began using the Agile and Scrum framework. Uh, at that time, the、uh, dev and ops team、uh, expanded independently. So、uh, each ops team had to communicate with each dev scrum team、uh, since their responsibility was different. For example, the、uh, ops team A、uh, in, is in charge of friend list, message, and notification. Uh, but uh, friend,、uh, friend application is、uh, developed by scrum A. The message、uh, application is developed by Scrum B, and the notification、uh, is developed by Scrum C's. So, the number of communication、uh, channels b e c o m e unmanageable. So, we wanted to、uh, solve this issue. Before PS5 launch, uh, we uh, adjusted to an embedded SRE model, which means、uh, SRE members、uh, sat directly within and As part of our development Scrum teams. So,、uh, we have about 20 SRE members and more than 10 Scrums. So,、uh, two SREs are embedded in each Scrum and drive the reliability, performance, efficiency, and security in the Scrum. And before this model,、um, uh, we worked as a traditional dev and ops style. So,、uh, a lot of learning and、uh, adjustment were、uh, needed. So,、uh, SREs、uh, not only began joining Scrum activities and managed ops tasks as a Scrum,、uh, but、uh, also changed、uh, their traditional culture for work. So,、uh, dev and ops、uh, have different roles, so they've gained、uh, understanding of, of, of ops and、uh, vice versa、uh, to provide the function better as a Scrum. For example, so we collaborated on de、uh, deployment strategies or resource prov provisioning. And monitoring and routing and troubleshooting. And this is current structure.、Uh, SREs are embedded in each Scrum、uh, and communicate with、uh, other teams like platform teams, security, and、uh, global operations. So、uh, we, deployment, uh, we do deployment monitoring, routing, troubleshooting, and cost management as a Scrum. And when、uh, improving a common operation scheme,、so、SREs collaborate、uh, across scrums. So as for CI CD and in,、uh, monitoring logging、uh, tools, so dedicated team is providing,、uh, providing functions for each scrum. s So, next,、uh, so we will explain other SRE models than Tokyo. So, I will hand over to you. Okay. Uh, next, <clears throat> I'd like to share a global SRE overview in PlayStation Network. <clears throat> okay, so again,、uh, this is a map of the PlayStation Network server team distributions. As you explained earlier, the PlayStation Network has been developed at microservices、uh, since the PlayStation 3 generation. So, we have server side teams in Tokyo, San Diego, San Francisco, Los Angeles, ISO Viejo, London, and Bangalore. So,、uh, in this section, based on what we and the SRE leaders of San Diego, San Francisco discussed,、uh, 
uh, we will explain how precision network is operated by them with highlighting the team structure. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> well, uh, this slide shows the SRE team's outline that we focus on this session. Uh, as we explained, the Tokyo SRE team is embedded SRE model. Uh, over 20 SREs have been assigned to over 10 scrums and operate over 200 services. Uh, internally, there are two embedded SRE members within teams in Tokyo, uh, but the scrum service they are in charge of are different. The way, the way of SRE work is the same. And there are SRE teams in multiple domains in San Diego, uh, there are differences in not only Scrum service they are responsible for, but also the SRE models they apply. <clears throat> well, the Commerce team has adapted embedded SRE models, same as Tokyo, although there are minor differences. Um, more than uh, 10 SREs are assigned to more than 10 Scrums and operate more than 50 services. And on the other hand, the account team in San Diego adopts the central C model. And similarly, 10 or more SREs oversee over 10 scrums, 50 services. And San Francisco has adopted another SRE model, uh, no SRE model. Basically, SRE is not involved in the operation of services. So developers are also responsible for SRE ops works. So more than 200 services are operated in this style. <clears throat> well, uh, we will explore more detail about these teams later. And I also share a brief explanation about the other teams. Well, I won't dive into the details in this section, but uh, besides what was shown on the previous the slides, there are other SRE teams and teams strongly related with service operations. <clears throat> well, uh, as far as, uh, well, uh, we also have SRE teams in Los Angeles, Aliso Viejo, UK and India, and some client team and some game studio also have SRE members. And we also have the DBRE team, infrastructure teams, operation teams, and platform teams. I suppose uh, sometimes they are classified as SRE uh, in some companies, but uh, we use separate teams. Well, uh, as the name suggests, DBRE is a team of engineers with expert expertise in the database area, including cache. And the infrastructure team is distributed team with members in several locations with the different roles. But in Tokyo, they are in charge of the CDN or network or security. And the operation teams provide operational support such as 24-7 monitoring, change, incident, problem management, and operational reports, and so on. And the platform teams provide Kubernetes platform, CI-CD pipeline, monitoring, monitoring, logging, common libraries, and so on. So it's it for the service teams. So next, let's talk a little about what's going well and areas that could be improved for each SRE models. First, uh, well, going well with the ML SRE models are stable SRE capacities, the easy maintaining service status awareness, and major DevOps culture. Well, uh, by defining SRE roles in Scrum and assigning dedicated engineer resources to it, uh, we can reliably proceed tasks related with service availability 
even in situations where feature requests comes in larger numbers and the development is very active. And in addition, uh, participating Scrum activities uh, make SREs easy to understand the up-to-date service situations. And I think uh, the PlayStation Network Tokyo team has a culture that there are many engineers, engineers who want to wholly understand and control their services by themselves. <clears throat> I, I feel this is not limited to us, but uh, something, the typical culture, especially in Japanese web service industries. So for these reasons, so there are many cases that engineer steps over their role boundaries. For example, developers send uh, telephone pull requests and SREs write a code, and raw tests done by each developers and SREs depending on the team stations. And I feel that this embedded SRE model is also effective in fostering such DevOps culture. And on the other hand, uh, as an opportunity, uh, due to the team structure, uh, <clears throat> well, if the service team ingress increases, it will be necessary to increase the number of SREs. So we understand this is an anti pattern, but uh, we assign some SREs to multiple teams because of the headcount constraints. But if you do it without additional care, uh, the number of meetings will double and the time that engineer can spend on engineering will decrease. So also, uh, there is negative impact on recovery time from the incidents. And in addition, the since SRE also plans their tasks based on the backlog of each service team. So SRE task will inevitably be prioritized by the single service team. So it is difficult to raise the priority of the cross scrum Kaizen activities. That is another opportunity for this model. And next, I'd like to introduce the San Diego Commerce team. Uh, they are also use the image SRE model, but unlike Tokyo, uh, they have a SRE centralized teams, which had the role of coordinating the cooperation with other teams. <clears throat> so when I talked with the San Diego members, I feel there are some difference in culture from Tokyo. So the difference is that uh, they respect their own and others' expertise, trust and interest others, and tend to focus on their own area. So I think such cultural difference with, will lead to service team, the developers can focus less on ops and in the going well and dedicate I mean, the SRE turns into the ops person in opportunity. So less dependency in going well is common with the Tokyo team and having an SRE in the service team allows the teams to own services full cycle and increasing the autonomy. Also, uh, certainly located SRE team called Core SRE is working well to support cross service coordination. <clears throat> And for other opportunities, scale and task prioritization, task prioritization are the same as the Tokyo team. So I think these are common pain points for the eminent SRE model. Okay, so next, SRE team for the account services in San Diego. This team choose a central SRE model in feature central SRE team support multiple service teams. 
as going well, they say the centralized backlog and the priorities, uh, easier to standardize on process, tools and adaptions, uh, one step, one stop to troubleshoot, resolve issues across services, uh, provide single interface for external stakeholders. <clears throat> well, uh, I think it is impressive that some of the opportunities in embedded SRE have been resolved as going well. Centralized backlog is a strength that it seems easy to proceed cross team improvements. <clears throat> but of course, uh, this model is not perfect. So same as embedded SRE model. Uh, this team also feel difficulties in team scaling. And in addition, they listed opportunity like the task prioritization difficulties, the coordination difficulties in team scaling. <coughs> and relationship with service team. So about task prioritization, they have to consider among SRE tasks, service team tasks, and other team tasks, for example, the platform-related works, uh, Kubernetes updates, the monitoring agent updates, new security solution introduction, and so on. So this sounds very exhausting. And from the viewpoint of the security and platform team, it is beneficial that they only need to communicate with a single SR team, but that also means that SRE team is additionally responsible for the work of the coordinating with individual service teams. So it's inside out of going well. So regarding the relationship with the service team, in addition to the difference in culture that I mentioned earlier, the central SRE structure in which the teams are divided between dev and SRE may make it difficult for the DevOps culture to mature. Last, the San Francisco team is a no SRE model. Well, uh, in the past, there was an SRE team, but uh, when all services were migrated to Kubernetes, the service operational tasks were handed over to the service team, and the SREs were transferred to other teams, such as the Kubernetes teams. Well, the strength of this model is empowering the service team with the policy of the, you build it, you run it. By merging dev and SRE roles into single role, they are maximizing the team autonomy. So it also gave or enforced to get service team a deep understanding of the running services from code to infrastructure platform. So on the other hand, if the team maturity is insufficient, they can't help asking the Kubernetes platform team to support troubleshoot. Even the Kubernetes team don't have such responsibility. And in addition, uh, by eliminating SRE roles, they can dynamically allocate engineering resources to both development and operational works. Uh, but on the other hand, the flexibility makes it difficult for teams to allocate stable engineering resources for SRE-related tasks, uh, service improvement works. So this is another opportunity of this model. Okay, so... I have summarized pros cons uh, comparing each model. So this table is based on actual example on presentation. So there are uh, parts that apply only to us, but I think there are many parts that can be generalized. As I explained, so each model has pros cons, and some pros for a model may become a cons for other model, and vice versa. So it, and it might be strange for you that we are such various SRE model in a large organization. 
Well,、uh, it is my opinion. This is derived from our history and cultures. For history,、uh, we have been developing PlayStation Network as microservices since PS3 era over 15 years. So we have a long background that each location team evolved autonomously. <coughs> and we have one ticket system, and we are progressing the consolidation of the Kubernetes platform across the PlayStation Network. But、uh, we don't aim to make everything common at this moment. So we accept there are some overheads, but we respect the difference, including culture. And we intend to widen opportunities for innovation and personal growth and keep agility for changes by remaining such autonomous spaces. Okay, so here is a message based on this. So, no single SRE model fits for all teams, and each SRE model can solve different problems. And the function of the model is influenced by the, its environment, for example, the culture, system, member, and team maturity. So, simply selecting a model is not enough. So, to fully optimize, we must initially understand and consider the sub several factors. And it's important to iterate kai Kaizen to polish the SRE team. So, as I talked, each team h a v e opportunities.、Uh, but、uh, each of us are trying to solve them.、Uh, for example, the San Diego team started to sharing toys with service teams. And one of San Francisco teams、uh, has asked and received a dedicated SR resources, which is working well. And also, we Tokyo team have Started working to solve our problems. So let us introduce it as a closing. Hi.、Uh, as we described,、uh, we are、uh, tackling massive traffic after COVID 19 and PS5 launch. And uh, uh, we want to make more、uh, robust network services and teams by improving our、uh, current problems. So, lastly,、uh, I'm going to explain our Tokyo SR team for the future.、Uh, we have two big opportunities. The first one is、uh, scaling platform and organizations.、Uh, as services become bigger,、uh, we need to unify platform and tools and enhance security and、uh, platform operations more efficiently. And the SREs、uh, should lead the, this activity in the Scrum.、Uh, on the other hand,、uh, SREs Uh, should keep the system stable and deliver the value for the customer. So it is difficult to do both in parallel. The second one,、uh, SRE needs to do Scrum work and cross Kaizen,、uh, cross Scrum Kaizen work. So I would like、uh, MDT SRE to try cross Scrum activity to improve service operations,、uh, operations work more widely.、Uh, and the, some activities went well. But、uh, when we want to improve our operation scheme、uh, dramatically on our service platform layer, so it is sometimes difficult to spend their time. So、uh, we have started a platform SRE team this year and migrated our SRE model to hybrid SRE. So there are three ob objectives. The first one is to improve efficiency of cross c r u m service operation work. So, when we introduce new features on platform layer,、uh, a lot of similar work should be done in all scrums. So, we are trying to standardize operation baseline so that they,、uh, SRE can apply changes across the services. The second one is to reduce、uh, the embedded SRE workload so that they can focus on real、uh, SRE work. So,、uh, we want to provide resources and assets to embedded SRE. The third one is to introduce a new operation model to embedded SRE by standardizing a、uh, standardizing, uh, current operation process. So,、uh, the greatest strength of、uh, platform SRE、uh, is that they can work、uh, in independently of the service team's priorities. And I believe the hybrid SRE model will fit for our current,、uh, current situation. 
Okay, so okay, so this is a closing message. Uh, well, the appropriate SRE model for the team will be changed depending on the business situation or technology trend or the transition of the teams or your services. So we will continue to explore optimal SRE model to maximize SRE power with Kaizen in mind. So that's all from us. So thank you.